It's a common myth that mushrooms like to grow in the dark. In fact, most mushrooms actually need light in order to grow properly. And in this video, we'll take a look at why that is, as well as share with you how to provide the right kind of light and show you what happens when you try to grow some without any. So mushrooms don't necessarily need light in order to grow, but providing the right light will have a huge impact on the yield, the shape, and the form of the fruiting body. Some commonly cultivated mushrooms are purposefully grown in the dark, mushrooms like enoki and button mushrooms, and we'll look into that in more detail shortly. But other mushrooms do need light for the fruiting body, the actual mushroom, to develop properly. Unlike plants, mushrooms don't get their energy through light from photosynthesis. They actually get their food from organic matter all around them, the substrate. The mycelium or the root system digests this food without the need for light. And it's only in the reproductive or the fruiting stage of a mushroom's life cycle that light really matters. So then why are some mushrooms grown in the dark? Like I just mentioned a minute ago, butter mushrooms and enoki mushrooms are most commonly grown in the dark. And this is intentionally done to create smaller mushrooms with paler caps, with these mushrooms being seen as more attractive for customers. In fact, enoki are manipulated even further still by growing in a very high CO2 environment. And this leads to the long, thin stems as the mushrooms try to reach up and find more oxygen. Have a look here in this picture and you can see the difference between a wild enoki and a cultivated variety and they're really quite different. So aside from these two varieties, most others are going to benefit from having some light. But what is it that light does to mushrooms? Well, we only have to look as far as how they grow in nature to understand this. In the wild, as mycelium reaches the surface of the ground or the outer reaches of its substrate, maybe it's a log or a piece of wood, it encounters more light and also fresh air and lower CO2 levels. These are all signals for the mushroom to know that it's time to start pinning, that it's found a good place to grow. So in essence, light basically tells the mycelium, it senses that here is your space to grow, you've got room to grow, the right environment is here, and it's one of the key pinning triggers. So that's one of the first things that light does is it helps the mushrooms to form the initial pins for the mushrooms to then go on and develop to maturity. And actually, if you wanna stop your mushrooms from growing too soon, that's one of the things you can do is just hold it back in a dark environment for a little bit longer. And some varieties will just hold off pinning until they see that light. But aside from developing the pins, it also helps the mushroom fruit body to form properly. And you'll see this in many examples where if you don't provide enough light, the mushrooms start to grow long and thin or they start stretching out you need to provide light in order for the fruit body to form properly and uh, produce an optimum fruit body. Light also increases the size of the fruit bodies and the color of the caps. So you'll get much darker caps with light. And if you don't have enough light, then you'll tend to get paler colors. And usually darker coloration is something that is desirable, as well as, of course, larger sized mushrooms. So to illustrate this, we've done a little experiment. We have here the Mella fruiting chamber. It's basically a small fruiting chamber where you can provide all the right conditions. But what we've done is black it out completely. So normally there's a window here and there's lights in there. We've switched the lights off. We've blacked out the window. So there's essentially no light going inside the fruiting chamber there. But we've kept all the other conditions on. You know, there's humidity and fresh air in there. And what you get is a really interesting result. So here is a block of lion's mane that's been fruiting in here for around about 10 days now. And as you can see, the fruit body has not developed properly. It's branching out, looking to find fresh air. So it's stretching out further and further as it would do in the wild if it was uh, growing inside of a log, it's gonna be stretching to find those spaces where there is fresh air in order to develop its spines properly. Now contrast that with a lion's mane that's been grown in our fruiting room under optimal conditions with enough light. And you can see the fruit bodies are much better formed. They're dense and nice and firm in texture. They're a bigger and heavier yield, and it's gonna be much easier to sell a fruit body like that than it is something like this, which is looking a bit more like coral. It's not gonna be as big a yield, and it's not gonna be as dense and firm in texture as well. Now we also did the same experiment with oyster mushroom block inside of this blacked out. And you can see in this clip here that it didn't like it. You know, it's grown in a very different shape. It's grown all long stems, very pale caps, not such a good quality fruit body at all. And especially if you compare that to 
this clip of it growing in a fruit of moon where it does have enough light, you can see the difference. It's a much meatier, better shaped cap that's going to be much easier to sell. So you can see from these examples really how much it impacts the mushroom as it begins to form if it doesn't have enough light. And you'll see this across a wide range of different mushrooms and uh, the characteristics are basically that you get a paler coloured cap and the fruit body tends to grow elongated as it starts looking for more light. So how do we create the right lighting conditions for mushrooms to grow well? In nature they grow using sunlight and tends to be in wooded or shaded areas so what you're looking to recreate is something like shaded sunlight and perhaps maybe you're just growing mushrooms at home with a grow kit you don't want to get super involved with lots of lighting you can just use indirect natural light for example on a worktop in your house you're going to get plenty of light inside of a, a room inside of a house what you want to avoid though however is to be in direct sunlight because that's likely to dry your mushrooms out so you just want to make sure it's in indirect light that's going to be enough to grow you know a small amount of mushrooms However, if you're growing in a more controlled condition, perhaps in a fruiting room like this, or maybe even a smaller fruiting chamber like the Mella, you're gonna to wanna to use some kind of artificial light. And generally, what we found to work best is LED lighting in the range of 6,500 to 9,000 Kelvins. Now that's quite a bright white, almost up towards sort of the blue end of the spectrum. Those kind of lights provide the right conditions. And in addition to that, you need to make sure you're providing enough light intensity. So uh, you want to provide between 100 and 300 lux. Now, if you're wondering what lux is, lux is a measurement of illuminance, and it's the total amount of light that falls on a surface. And a lumen is a measure of the amount of light emitted from a device, i.e. it's the brightness. So one lux is equal to one lumen per square meter. So if you're aiming for 300 lux, then you need 300 lumens per meter squared of your fruit and room space. So if you know the size of your room or your fruiting chamber, you can calculate how many lumens you'll need in order to create 3000 lux. So for example, if your space is 10 meters squared, then you're gonna need 3000 lumens in order to create 300 lux. Just be aware though that when you're in a room like this with bigger bits of shelving, that's gonna uh, block off and create some shaded spots around the room. So I'd highly recommend um, installing an app on your phone, there's lots of free ones out there. Uh, something like this that will measure the amount of lux going into the sensor at the top of the camera. And then you can just go around the room in different spaces and just see where the surface of where the mushrooms are growing off of. You wanna just check that you're getting between 100 and 300 lux in different spots around the room. And you may find that you need to add additional lighting if you're not getting enough lighting in certain areas or it may be that you just need to reposition where your bags are fruiting from to make sure they're fruiting from a spot where there is enough light. And if you don't use or have access to a light meter like this, you can also just let the mushrooms tell you. So just watch what they're doing and if you find that they're growing in a long elongated form, it's telling you I haven't got enough light. You'll also need some kind of a automated cycle timer because you don't need your lights to be on 24 hours a day. You want to have it set really 12 hours on, 12 hours off. That's the most common for most mushroom cultivation. And the easiest way to achieve that is just using a simple cycle timer like you can see here, where you can just set the intervals where the plug is switched on and the other intervals where it is switched off. That's probably the easiest way of creating a 12-12 lighting cycle. So we have a range of in-depth lessons on topics like lighting and humidity and everything else inside our low-tech mushroom farming online course. If you want to just experience a little bit about what it's like to learn with us, then you can check out our free workshop here where we go into a bit of detail on different ways of growing mushrooms and getting started. If you've already seen that, then do just come and check out the course page itself at growcycle.com forward slash go. So we've seen in this video how light affects mushrooms and how they grow, what happens if you don't provide enough of it, and we've talked a bit about how to provide the right lighting as well. I hope you found this video interesting and useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.